afternoon baseball here on the show. Ought to be a good one here between the Boston Red Sox and the Tampa Bay Rays. J.D. Martinez with just days left to play the league's top power bat looks to cement his case for the home run crown next. Brendan McKay gets handed the ball for the fourth and final game of the series. What do you have for us on him Danny. Hey Matt in a day and age where runs are scored at an alarming rate this guy's been pretty rock solid last three starts ERA under 2.00 not an easy thing to do and you'll know if he's on early if he's good and on point in the first inning that Maybe usually means he's going to be ball. rock solid throughout the rest of the game into the box Andrew Benintendi and we are ready for some daytime baseball underway now in the Sunday finale as the first pitch today is taken for strike one. And guys, the Rays, as they begin play here this afternoon, they were losers last time out, but still in a decent groove as they'd won four or five prior to that. Yeah, man, nothing they'd like to do more than to salvage this one, D-Roll. After this one, they go on the road for a seven-game road trip, so big to get this win here today. Yeah, last game in front of the home folks before you go out for a week. This is a big one. They're going to get it done. And a good pitch there as this is swung on and missed for the first out of the ball game. Boy, there's the perfect pitch right there. The straight changeup. He hadn't used it yet in this at bat. And what does he do? He uses it, pulls the string, and gets the big strikeout. Alex Verdugo comes on with one gone here as he looks at a called strike one. The average for him at 267 on the year. 11 home runs and 51 runs batted in. A swinging strike, and now it's 0 and 2. Time for a look at the umpires working this one. Behind the plate is Daryl Parker. Hey, not a very big strike zone, but a strike zone that kind of moves around a little bit too much for my life. Yeah, Dan, I know there's not a clear scouting report with Daryl. I'll tell you what, you're going to know in the first two innings where he's going to be. That third, the designated hitter. And that'll bring up J.D. Martinez with just a few games left to play. He comes into this one with a sizable lead in the home run standings. And the way he's swinging the bat, I don't think anyone catches him. It's got to be a nice feeling stepping to the plate, knowing you're going to end up a home run champ. Now that's when you know it's a good pitch. He broke off a really nice breaking ball down in the zone right there. And even though this is one of the best hitters around, he waved right through it. Working for the punch out and the offering. He's got it to second for one on to first as they get the double play to get him out of the inning around the horn they go five to four to three to end the threat we're back with more on a Sunday afternoon following this Marcus Walden gets the ball for the Red Sox in this one Dan any thoughts. You know, Matt, he's looking to bounce back for a little bit better of a performance than his last one. Pitched less than five innings in his last one, was able to come away with a no decision. I think he and his team are expecting a lot more in this one. So digging in now, Joey Wendell. He'll leave things off here Here's in the up. bottom half of the first. The left fielder. Joey. And the pitch. Wendell. Fouled off. Good deception on the slider there as he's way out in front. Tries the slider to ring him up, but he lays off one and two. Just a bit low. Tough call, but it's two and two. The classic back foot slider right there with two strikes. Usually gets a ton of swing and misses. Nice layoff right there. Fight for another pitch. Boy, good cutting action to that pitch as that's the first out of the inning. This is the pitch I think we'll see a lot from him in this game. The cutter darting in on the hitters in the opposite batter's box. It can be a real effective pitch when it's located well, and that one was right there. Into the box now as he'll take a look at ball one. Well, these Red Sox entering play here this afternoon. They come in looking to make it two in a row as they were winners last time out. 
Hey, Matty V, you know, if there's such a good thing as splitting a series, dear old, this is the one. They lose the first two games of this series, win game three. They'd like nothing more than to split this series and win game four. Yeah, Bobby Cox always used to say, you got to take care and beat the teams you're supposed to beat and then play 500 against the really good teams. They have a chance to do that exactly today. Drop the first two, but if they can win today, they split this series and move on. One out, nobody on. And there's a called strike at the knees as he was hoping for a base on balls there, but it's a full count now, three and two. And he missed with that one. It's ball four, a one-out walk here in the home first. And that's the beauty of having a guy in the two-hole like him. He's almost like another leadoff hitter, working a walk with just one out. And I think there's a good chance that he's going to be on the move at some point. So one gone in the inning here with the runner at first. And Austin Meadows will be the next to bat. As a look, now the pitch. And this is off the corner and low, ball one. Now a move over to first, runner back standing. Pitch out, nothing doing. Two and one. The two one. Is swung on and missed for strike number two. Hey, I can't have one of my best left-handed power bats fishing for balls off the plate. Full count, three Full balls count. and two strikes to the Rays' DH. Got to believe that runner from first is going to be in motion, especially in this situation. As an offensive player, just hit something hard because those defenders are going to be moving. And a backhanded reach at first, but he can't flag it down. And that runner will go no further than second as there are two aboard now. Well, that's one of the, I guess, the advantages of hitting with that hole between first and second base, D-Row. First baseman has to hold that runner on. That leaves that right side wide open. Yeah, and credit the batter right there. Nice piece of hitting right there. Not trying to do too much. He took a look at the defense and saw where it was aligned and tried to beat him. Brandon Lau is the batter now as he looks at a ball of 1-0. As a look, now the pitch. And a strike to even the count. One and one. Yeah, I get it. They want to run this guy's pitch count up, but that was a pretty good pitch to hit. He might be kicking himself that he didn't swing at that one. And this is low, ball two. Two and one. Has to be a challenge pitch coming up here. He probably doesn't want to flirt with loading the bases. Now the two-one pitch. Taken, strike two. Hey, now he's got me confused up here. This is a known sinker baller out on the mound trying to roll a double play, and he throws him a four-seamer. Hoping to send him packing. Pitch on its way. I don't think he can afford another base runner here, so whatever pitch he feels best about, whichever one he feels most comfortable with, that's the one I expect him to turn to. Checked his swing there, and did he go? No, he did not, says the third base umpire, so it's ball four. Some guys take a little time to find the zone, but with the second walk of the first inning, it might be a little more than just settling in here. Not sure how long of a leash they'll give him, but they're not going to let him walk the world out there. G-Man Choi, the next to hit, is back in the starting lineup for this one after sitting out last night's game. Line drive to center field. And that's in there. Base hit. One run scores. Long throw to third. The run scores from second. It's a 2-0 ball game. Hey, one of the things you want to do, Dior, is strike that's early. Cool. And they've done that's just that with a big hit driving really? in two. Yeah, Dan, great to grab an early lead right there, especially when you can throw up a crooked number for your pitcher. To the plate now, Willie Adamas. And a check swing. Did he go around? No, says the first base umpire. It's ball one. 
the 1-0 home is laid off for ball two. Well, I think he's got to find a way out of this jam and limit the damage. If he's unable to do that, this game could get away from him. Started to go around, but it's ruled strike one anyway. Oh, and not an easy pitch to lay off of, but he did somehow, and he's got it to three and one. It's clear he just hasn't been able to find any rhythm out there. Pretty much unable to hit any of his spots. And now he's at 3-1, and one, and he's put him into another great hitting count. On the move is Pilar. He makes the catch, and the runner from second will tag and hit for third. And he'll take those extra 90 feet, so put runners at the corners now with two gone in the inning. The third baseman, Yandy Diaz. And that will bring in Yandy Diaz. And as you check out his righty-lefty splits, no surprise that he hits better against southpaws than he does against right-handers. First delivery to him on the way. A ball and no strikes. I think this inning could have far-reaching effects in this game. They're really making him work, and unless he dials it in, it's probably going to limit how deep he goes into this game. Checks his swing, but this pitch is right there for strike one. Even though it's early on in this one, anytime you get runners in scoring position, you'd like to knock them in. This is hit high in the air out toward left center. Chasing after it is Pilar. He tracks it down, and that will end the inning. The sights and sounds of a day at the ballpark. Oh, my goodness. More to come on... Second inning set to go, and that'll bring up the shortstop and one of the better two-strike hitters in baseball, Xander Bogarts. First pitch coming, here it is. Looked like that one tied him up a bit, a swing and a miss. Bogarts is a player referred to as clutch by teammates, coaches, and of course the media. He seems to find himself in pressure situations often, and it's hard to find many instances where those moments have gotten the best of him. It just appears he really relishes the big spot. The third base. A nice leadoff single to start the second right there. They're already down. They got to find a way to stay on the attack and get back in this game. We'll see how they play it here. Here now is Rafael Devers. High in the air out to center field. Kiermaier's got a read on it. One down. That is it. The first baseman. Jesus. Aguilar. In now, Jesus Aguilar. And he's a guy looking to break out in a big way. Hasn't been getting the results he or his club have been hoping for. Scooped up. One there. On to first. And that's two innings and two double plays they've hit into so far as the inning is over. Takes just four pitches to retire the Red Sox. They're still down. It's 2-0. Last half of the second set to go. And next will be the power hitting catcher, Mike Zanino. Pitch on its way now to Zanino. And he gets ahead 0-1. Zanino, the former Seattle Mariner, he signed as a free agent with this organization earlier in the season. Yeah, he didn't have an opportunity to really get acclimated to this ball club. Showing up during the season is not always easy, opening the doors to a big league clubhouse and trying to get to know your teammates. The best way to get to know them is to go out and produce. Swing and a miss on the slider, and that's out number one. Classic slider down and away for the strike out there. Not a whole lot to say about that pitch that hasn't been said a million times already. That's just a real tough pitch for a hitter to pick up out of a pitcher's hand, so they end up chasing when they're in protect mode. Kevin Kiermeyer stands in as he looks at a called strike. Into the windup, here comes the 0-1. Hit out towards second. And that is going to sneak on through into right. It's a one-out single. Boy, not the way you'd like to draw up an 0-2 pitch, D-Roll, but from a hitter's perspective, a pretty good job of staying alive 0-2. Yeah, and he did an excellent job on the offensive side. Not to let the A-B get away from him. I know he was down 0-2, but he bowled his neck and he stayed in there.
Here comes the first pitch. Joey Wendell will stand in for the second time now as he looks at a called strike. It's nothing and one. The 0 1 pitch started to go around there, but he holds up ball one. Runner at first here, one man out. Two and one to the Rays' leadoff batter. Clearly trying to control the running game with the slide step here. Yeah, that's a good way of trying to control the running game, Matt. The problem with it, though, it has a tendency to throw your command off because you're worrying about that runner on base. Cut fastball that time, but he doesn't bite, and now it's three and one. And he lays off here. A nice job. It's ball four. First and second now with one away. Well, he's really laboring in the early going here. That's his third walk of the game already. We'll see if he can get it together or if this is just one of those days where he's going to have to grind his way through this start. After reaching on a walk in his first at bat. From the stretch. Tucker, a previous member of the Houston Astros. He came here by way of trade earlier this year. I know he'd tell you he'd like to be playing a little bit better, but I think it's as advertised for this ball club right now. I think the manager is getting exactly what they expected. Down low, and the plot thickens here. Three and O. Oh. Well, nothing can make you question yourself on that mound more than three straight balls to a guy you know that you should go right after. Sometimes you just lose the strike zone and you don't know why. Lying toward the gap in left center. But this will hang up just enough as he takes it in in stride in left center for the second out. Now that the designated hitter. Off there. So next to the plate for Tampa Bay, Austin Meadows. Two's all over the place. Two on, two out, and of course, here in inning number two. Oh, missed that one by a mile. It's 0-1. Hey, I'm surprised he went to that spot in his own. This guy's known for being a down-and-in hitter. Don't expect too many pitches going in that spot. The 0-1 on its way. Oh, he had him fooled there. No balls and two strikes. Not much you're going to do with that pitch right there. You have to catch it out front before it even breaks, and even if you do that, it's a tough pitch to keep fair. Good waste pitch, one and two. I really like watching righties throw that cutter in on lefties' hands like that. This one was down two, and if he hits it, there's a pretty good chance he's going to pound it into the ground, maybe even give himself a shin burger. Kiermaier on second. Wendell at first, two out in the inning. Throws him for strike three, and that retires the side. Ray strand a pair. After two, it's a 2-0 ball game. Now to the plate, Christian Vasquez. So we'll check out how he did in August versus how he's finishing off the season down the stretch here in September. In there for strike one. I know he stole a strike right there, but he better be careful with that curveball. That's coming across and catching a lot of plate. And if he stays back, he's going to drive that thing with some serious authority. Just a touch inside. Perhaps it's two and one. Maybe a little jumpy there as he swings through the fastball. The M.O. of this pitcher in the early going is certainly establishing the inside part of the plate. He has been dominant. Sometimes you just got to tip your hat if a guy can effectively, consistently pitch inside like he is. In now, Isan Diaz. Smoked on the ground up the middle. And that'll find its way into center field for a one-out hit. Obvious pitch recognition right there. OO changeups usually get guys out in front, but he was able to stay back, recognize it, and drive it for a base hit. At the plate now, Kevin Pillar. As he'll take a look at a pitch too low, it's ball one. He comes in with that average down in the 240s. Five he's homers going, and going, 29 going. driven in. One ball, one strike to count. 
Runners on first with one down. A ball and two strikes. Great pitch in that situation. If he makes contact on that one, more than likely he's hitting into a double play. One two pitch is a bit high, and he's back to even at two and two. Working for the punch out and the offering. Lifted in the air out to left field. Wendell is there to put it away, and the runner will be forced to retreat back to first. Now batting, the left fielder, Andrew Benintendi. So it's a runner at first with two gone, and up next, the exciting left handed bat of Andrew Benintendi. From the belt, the pitch. A runner on first with two away. 0 oh 2, the count to Benintendi. I know this guy has a lot of weapons on the mound, but what makes him so successful is that he got him looking, and that'll do it. The inning is over. One left for the Red Sox. They're down two to nothing. And we're back for the bottom of the third. Let's see. Matt, race manager Kevin Cash talked to me in between innings about his lineup's offensive production. And overall, he's really happy with the at-bats they're putting together. They've already worked out three walks, so he feels as though that kind of willingness to let the opposition work themselves into trouble will continue to result in good things for them on the scoreboard. All right, thanks, Heidi. So now it'll be the four-hole hitter, Brandon Lau, swinging it well so far in this series. He's three for nine. First offering on its way. Ball that now. This is a spot you really don't want to be in with a great hitter like that. You can't just lay one in there, but you also don't want to run the count to three and zero. Swing and a miss on the heater, and it's two and one. Cutter, and that's a called strike two. Two balls, two strikes, a crucial count for both pitcher and hitter. So, Dan, what was your approach on the mound in that count? Do you still pitch for the strikeout here? Action pitch right here, 2-2. Two, two. The last thing you want to do is to fall behind the count, 3-2. So he ran the fastball by him for the punch the out. Brendan Lau is sent packing to begin the bottom of the third. Digging in for his second at bat, G Man Choi. He drove home two with a single in his last plate appearance. Infield shifted well to the right. Here's the first pitch. And that misses downstairs for a ball, one and one. Well, that backdoor breaking ball just missed right there. It's a very effective pitch. If you can hit the outside corner of that pitch, it's unhittable. Lays off two and two now. Is swung on and driven out to right center field. A ball that's well hit. Verdugo looks up. And this one is gone. A home run. Solo shot to right center. And even 20 home runs for him now thus far. As the Rays have opened up a 3-0 lead. You want to certainly drive home runs out of the ballpark, then you better get on the gas. And that's what he did right there. That fastball was not sneaking by him. Stepping in now, Willie Adamas. As he'll watch a slider that runs out of the strike zone away for ball one. Flied out in his first half bat, so make him 0 for 1 so far. Ball and a strike. Some action out in the bullpen. Couple of right-handers starting to loosen up. Bases are empty. One man out. A ball and two strikes to the Rays shortstop. And now 
a slider in there for a called third strike, and there are two gone now. He's not going to feel good about that at bat, third nor should he. You have to want to swing the bat, but he just stood there and looked at four straight pitches. Hopefully, we'll see him get a little bit more aggressive next time. Standing in now, Yandy Diaz. And she'll take a look at a slider here that misses for ball one. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. And he falls behind now, 2 and 0. Diaz, a Cuban born ball player. He's in his fourth season as a major league player. Now a cut fastball finds the target, 2 and 1. He's been getting lit up all game, and there's a common denominator. He keeps missing right down the middle of the plate. Case in point with that last one. Swung on and missed, and it's even at two and two. Two out, nobody on. Two two pitches fouled away. Now here's the pitch. Lazy fly ball out to center field. And that'll get down for a base hit. Now batting. Kepker. Mike. So here's Mike Zanino. As the first pitch misses to him, it's ball one. 0 for 1 here in the early going. Downstairs, two balls and no strikes. It's one thing to get hit around, but it's far worse when you're getting yourself into trouble by not throwing strikes. Every pitcher's been there, but it doesn't make it. A swing and a shot hit down the corner. And he just couldn't keep that ball fair as it winds up a long foul ball. And he can't catch the corner here, so he's behind three and one. You know, I kind of see why his ERA is so high coming into this one. He's just putting these guys in too many good hitters counts. That'll catch up with you real quick. Now here's a check swing, and they appeal down to first. No swing. So that's ball four. He did not want to let the hitter off the hook with two outs, and now he's got a runner in scoring position to deal with. Kiermaier. So here's Kevin Kiermeyer, and after that quick walk, is it fair to wonder if this starter is beginning to show signs of getting tired? Yeah, that could be the case, Matty. Sometimes you just lose your focus, lose your command, but it'll be real important. High and deep to right. Racing back the right fielder at the track. And a scaling attempt at the wall, but it'll be in vain because this ball is gone. So it's a three-run shot to straightaway right field. Number 31 for him on the season. As they pile on, it's now six to nothing. A little quick jump right there. He does it in a variety of different ways. That time, first pitch out of the gate, he was coming unglued. the Red Sox skipper is up out of the dugout and on his way toward the mound and he's going to make a move as that's going to be all for his starter this afternoon so he'll beat an early retreat here this afternoon he'll be asked to eat some Number innings 20, Nathan Evolving. Joey Wendell digs in now. Ball one. Evaldi stands 6-2 and throws from the right side. He was selected in the 11th round during the 2008 draft. I know this guy wouldn't go into the category of superstar, but to grind out the career he has being drafted where he was, my hat's off to him. Hit on the ground down the first baseline, but a foul ball and it's 2-1 and one now. Now here's the pitch. Hey. Two ball, two strike. Hey. 
Lays off the splitter that time, and it's full three and two. Four runs here in this half inning. Right side. Fielded cleanly. Throw on to first. Will finally retire him as the inning will draw to a close. So four runs in the inning, and they come on the strength of the two big flies. On now to the top of inning number four. Tampa Bay leads this one. And the next up will be Alex Verdugo. He starts the inning, and Dan, they're down six in the early going, so what do they need to do to claw back into this thing? Well, first of all, Matt, I think they need to start to get some base runners. It's hard to be patient when you're down by six, but base runners are the key to getting back into this one. Kiermaier is right there, one down. Up next for the Red Sox, the designated hitter, J.D. Martino. So the base is empty here with one away. And into bat next, one of the best run producers in the land, J.D. Martinez. Changes up on him, but that's in the dirt for a ball. That missed. Close. It's ball two. Hey, struggling to find the release point of that curveball. That wasn't a very good one. Somehow he's just got to find that field because that's a pitch he's going to need going forward. Two and one now. Three and one to Martinez. Team's been struggling on offense. Let your D work for you right here. Pound the zone. Hit hard on the ground to first. And he'll take it to the bag himself for the out. Now that is Xander Bogart. And that brings in Xander Bogarts. A base hit in his first trip. Infield in the overshift here. Now the pitch. According to the career numbers on the back of his baseball card, Bogarts carries a hitting line just over the 280 plateau. Well, can't spot the cutter any better than that. Nothing in two now. Line but speared on a hop. Throw to first will get him easily and the side is retired. Down in order go the Red Sox. They won't make a dent in a six to nothing deficit. So striding in, Kyle Tucker is set to lead us off in the home half of the fourth inning. Even though they're up by a boatload early on in this one, you can't get complacent and get lazy. They got to keep the gas pedal down because this team that they're playing can strike and score a lot of runs too. That's a tough pitch right there. Curveball kind of front hip. Your first move is to bail a little bit and kind of not want to get hit by that pitch. I can totally understand him taking that first strike. A 1-1. Takes a pass and misses. That strike two. Woo-wee! That was some smoke right there. High fire right on by. They haven't played perfectly as it's hit on the ground. And an off-balance throw is in time as he takes one away. Wow. The batter, the designated hitter, Austin Meadows. So the bases are empty with one man gone. And Austin Meadows will be the next to bat. Outfield shaded toward right center. Here's the first pitch. Whoa, that's a fastball here as he'll take a look at ball one. One and oh. And a splitter here, but he had a bit too much on it as this bounces up to the plate. When you're down six on the mound, you got to at least throw strikes here. Now the 2-0 home. Ball three. Well, he was definitely looking fastball here, and he got one. But that was good discipline to lay off and get himself into a 3-0 count. And boy, that is nowhere near the strike zone as it's all the way to the backstop and a four-pitch walk. Whoa, you know a pitcher is really fighting himself when he misses a zone by that much? I'm surprised the catcher could even bring that in. Now at the plate, Brandon Lau. He went down on strikes last time up. He's set. Here it comes. Foul tip into the catcher's glove at strike one. That was a pretty good fastball after he walked the hitter previous. There was a little angry on that heater. 
0-1. Here it comes. Six runs, six hits, and no errors for Tampa Bay so far. And he fouls this one off. The next 0-2. Oh, that's inside. Pretty good pitch right there. Fastball in off the plate. One of the things you want to do as a pitcher, try to stand those hitters up. Swing and a miss on the fastball that time. Out number two. This has not been a weekend to remember for him. He's just been completely now lost at the plate, the flailing all play. over the place. Now that's his sixth Joel. strikeout of the series. They've really got him figured out. Into the box now, G-Man Choi. And he puts it on the ground to second. Reined in. Throw over to Aguilar at first. He'll take care of him to end the inning. So no runs here on no hits, no errors, and one man left on base. On to the top of inning number five we go. The Rays lead it six to nothing. Welcome back. Heidi Watney standing by as we get set for the top of the fifth. Thanks, Matt. During the commercial break, I talked about the Red Sox offense with the Boston manager, and he told me he's pretty unhappy with their discipline at the plate in this one. He said they've been chasing at pitches out of the zone all game, which obviously doesn't usually lead to good results. Until they start being more selective with their swings, he said they will continue to struggle. All right, Heidi, thank you. All ready to go in the top of the fifth. And that brings up the third baseman, Rafael Devers. This one doesn't look good so far. Down by a boatload as we enter the middle innings. It's about time they get something going. And the last thing you want to do is fall behind where you have to score a bunch in the eighth and ninth inning. Oh, and he's really getting the better of him now. It's strike two. There's a breaking ball that couldn't quite catch the inside. The one and two pitch. On the ground to the left side. He's got it. And no chance on the throw here as he reaches first easily. I know that has to be frustrating from a pitcher's standpoint. But nice execution. Nice hustle. Bottom line, nice hustle. Pitcher still one good pitch away from getting a double play. You know, D-Row, one of the things you want to do is make quality pitches as a pitcher. And there's not much you can do right there. You make a pretty good pitch, and the next thing you know, you have a leadoff single on an infield ground ball. A ball and a strike now. On the ground to second base. This could be two. To second for one. On to first, and they get the double play. Boy, that's about as easy as it comes. A chopper, two hopper, turns into a tailor-made 4-6-3 double play. So bases are empty here with two gone. And from the on-deck circle into the batter's box comes Christian Vasquez. Line to the right side. And a little self-preservation down at first as he pulls that one in to end the inning. Red Sox go down quietly. They still find themselves down six zip. Set now for the bottom of the fifth and stepping up as the shortstop, Willie Adamas. Here's the first pitch to him. Check swing, cold strike, 0 and 1. Swing and a miss, and he's in trouble now, 0-2. Get it ready, big boy. This guy's throwing three digits right Fouled away. Ready with another 0-2. One ball, two strikes, you count. And he nope. just misses inside with the fastball there. And it's fouled away. A 
Another try at 2-2. And there's a fastball well off the plate inside. You can certainly tell at-bats like this one frustrate the heck out of a pitcher. But you got to find a way to stay composed and execute your plan. The 3-2 one more time. And another foul ball. You know, taking you inside the mind of a batter right here, you can't get in auto swing mode. You still have to control the strike zone. And that misses ball four now. It's a leadoff walk to get the home half of the fifth underway. And that at bat will put a smile on any manager's face. The pitch total of the posing pitcher just keeps going higher and higher. And he still couldn't put him away. So this inning is off to a good start for the guys carrying the sticks. Now in the box, Yandy Diaz. A hit in two at-bats for him at this point in the ballgame. He's ready. Here's the first offering. Hit high and deep to right center. Playable for Verdugo, and there's one gone. The batter, the catcher, Mike. Ready once again, Mike Zanino. First pitch on its way. Yeah. Shocked he didn't let it fly right there. Usually you're looking for a fastball elevated to get the party started. Pitch on its way now to Zanino. Starts to go around here, but it doesn't matter. This is strike two anyway. Six runs, six hits, and no errors for Tampa Bay so far. A one and two count to the Rays catcher. As a look, now the pitch. And rarely do you see a player of his caliber fooled that badly, but he was tied up in knots that time. Two away now. Big curveball for the strikeout there, and that came after an absolute missile of a fastball. He's the breaking ball out of the pitcher's hand. It's so hard for hitters to sit back long enough after they've seen a really good fastball. Only the best can keep their hands back on those. Kevin Kiermeyer is at the plate as he looks at ball one. Two hits and two trips for him thus far. One oh home. A swing and a miss. That's the first strike. He is in complete command out on the mound today. He's got all four corners locked in, and now he's raising eye levels to boot. No offer on that one. Two balls and a strike. Those were two great executed pitches right there away from this batter. He can hurt you in a heartbeat. I don't think anything's going to leak out over the heart of the plate. Now a drive out to left center field. Adamas ignores his coach. He's chugging for home. And he's safe at the plate. And they're pulling away. They lead by seven. Now that well, the beat goes on with this guy. Runner in scoring position. No doubt when he comes up, he's thinking RBI. What does he do? Double the drive and another run. This guy is a money, money run producer. And that'll bring up Joey Wendell. As he'll take a look at ball one. 0 for 2 for him to this point. Bounce to first. On to the back with it is Aguilar, and that'll retire the side. A run for the race thanks to the RBI double. Five innings complete. It's now 7-0. Top half of the sixth about to get started, and that'll bring in the second baseman, Isan. Isan Diaz. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Outside, that's the ball. The 1-0. swing as he pulls this one into right. A leap, but he can't bring it down. Base hit. 
That's what we refer to in the biz as a hanger right there. He's lucky he's getting his baseball back. Kevin Pilar. Into the box, Kevin Pilar. And so wait out a breaking pitch here that finds the zone for strike one. Nobody out, runner on first. Takes this the other way to right. In there, a base hit. And that runner will go no further than second as there are two aboard now. now back, yeah, and that back-to-back -back base knocks right off the bat here. As we take a look at the numbers, you see they aren't that bad, but he's definitely got into a no-out jam here. We'll see if he can get out of it. The left-handed hitting Andrew Benintendi stands in. No balls and a strike to count. Nothing in one count. Here it comes. Now this ball popped up. Playable, however, behind the plate for Zanino. And he will make the play, and an important one it was, as those runners will have to hold now with one away. Digging in once again, Alex Verdugo. His line includes a single and a fly ball and two at-bats thus far. Can't find the zone there as he lays off the breaking ball. Wanted to get the front door curveball on the inside corner there, but it backed up a little and stayed off the corner. Lifted down the line and left. And no one will track it down. Runners are at first and second with one away. And here's one that misses as the count moves to two and one on the Boston right fielder. Oh, that's a tough call for Blue right there. Either way you call it, somebody doesn't like it. But hey, that's the life of an umpire. And this is going to get down for extra bases as that'll get one, if not both of them, home. And they'll get a little closer here as the run comes across to score from first. That makes it a 7-2 to two game. <laughs> You'd think they'd stop pitching to this guy by now. He's been torching them all weekend, and he stays hot here with another extra base hit. They'll be happy when this series is over so they don't have to deal with this dude anymore. Here's J.D. Martinez. 0-1 the count. Hits are even at 7 apiece. And he is cruising now. It's 0-2. Yeah, this is straight survival mode. Down 0-2. The numbers are definitely not with safe. It was a highlight reel stop, but he can't get it out. And runners will be at first and second with one away. Here's Xander Bogarts now. He was a ground out victim last time up. Off the plate and low here, ball one. Right guy, right spot. This is one of the better hitters in their lineup. Just the guy they want to see coming up now to get this inning going. But he'll barely have to move out there and right as he hauls this one in for the second out. Now back. Third base. Rafael Devers. Rafael Devers, the next to bat. And we'll see what he can do here. Two on, two away, two home so far this inning. Laid off the bender there, but it's in for a called strike. Back up the middle. And that is through into center field. A base hit. Now a long throw home. And he is safe at the plate, and that'll cut it to a 7-3 ball game now. You know what I like right there, Dan, is the batter's approach. Not trying to do too much, just taking it right back up the chute again, staying within himself, and just knowing that anything to the outfield gets him an RBI. Now that's a good piece of hitting. That's a great point, Dior. I think a lot of times hitters go up there trying to do a little bit too much. Sometimes you just have to go ahead and hit the ball where it's pitched, and a good job, and a run batted in. Strike one to start the at-bat. 0-1, oh, here's the pitch grounded back up the middle. Adamas picks it up and he'll go the short way to retire the side. So they pick up three runs on four hits here. No errors and a couple of men left. Two, three, and four do up in the home half of the sixth. The race. Striding in, Kyle Tucker. He was retired via the ground ball last time up. The right field. Kyle. First pitch of the at-bat. There's a fastball on the inner third taken for a strike. Into the windup, here comes the 0-1. I got one ball, one strike.
lifted into center field. Pilar is there, and he has it for the first out. Now back, the designated hitter, off there. So. To the plate now is the designated hitter, Austin Meadows. A hit in two tries for him so far. Here comes the first pitch. Ball that down, John. One out, nobody on. Clearly off with his timing on that one, a swinging strike. Now a good pitch around the knees, but it doesn't quite catch the bottom of the zone. The 2 1 is looked at for ball three. We all know this guy is a great hitter in a 3 1 count. This is just what he's looking for. He loves to hit when the count's in his favor like this. Swing and a miss much too early, and that makes it a full count. Three two pitch. Gets him swinging. He struck him out. Pretty textbook breaking ball for the punch out right there. Got it to bend a lot, and by the time it got there, it had fallen completely out of the zone. Not much you can do with that pitch. In now, Brandon Lau. As he lines it hard to the right side, but out of play. No hits to this point. The wind up and the 0 1. Check swing, but he held up in time. Ball one. And here's a fastball, not close as he runs it to 2 and 1 now. Bases are empty here with two men out. He's fallen behind now, three and one. G Man Choi would be next. And the count will be full. The three two pitch. And he lost him here on 3-2 as that pitch misses. It's ball four. Well, the reason power hitters generally draw more walks than other guys is exactly what we saw right there. Pitchers work around them and nibble the corners a lot more so they don't get burned. He made some good pitches, but he just couldn't get him to chase enough out of the zone. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. G-Man Choi is in with two away as he takes a ball, 1-0. I'll tell you, it's a helpless feeling for a manager or a pitching coach when your pitchers are having a really hard time throwing strikes. What are you supposed to do other than keep trying new guys until someone starts attacking the zone? Count now a ball and a strike. Two balls and a strike to the Rays' first baseman. The 2 1 home. Waves and misses for strike number two. It's not easy to get your barrel to a pitch that high. That can be an effective location as long as he keeps it above the letters. All even at two and two. Here it is. Strike three called, and the inning is over. One left for Tampa. They hang on to a 7 to 3 lead. Jake Faria is on to pitch from the bullpen now to start inning number seven. Number 36. Seventh inning ready to roll. And next to hit is the catcher, Christian Vasquez. It doesn't look very promising so far in this one as we move into the later innings. Down by a bundle, it's time to get some base runners and hopefully a long ball to get them back into this one. Probably a design take right there. They need base runners, so they're going to make them try to bring the ball in the strike zone. Barely able to make contact. Down 0 2 now. Nothing in two count and the pitch. 
Oh, a fastball swung on and missed, and for the second time today, he's gone on strikes. Anytime a pitcher locates a fastball on the inside corner, it's going to be a tough pitch to hit. That one was spot on, and he had no answer for it. So now to the plate, Isan Diaz. Fouled off. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. Rounded down the third baseline. And this will stay inside the third base bag. A fair ball. And he is in the second base with a double. His third hit this afternoon. He just smoked this ball right down the line. Take a look here. Hard to tell if it was fair or foul in real time, but you can see it flies right over the bag. Ump was all over it and made a great call. At the plate, Kevin Pillar. As he'll go after the first pitch and bounce it into foul territory. He's working on a one for two game so far. The 0 1 on its way. Way inside with that one, a pretty easy take there. Fastball taken, but that gets the zone for a strike. The 1 2. Hit out towards second. And there are two away now. Now batter, the left field, Andrew. So the batting order turns over now and set to go. Andrew Benintendi, runner in scoring position with Sugan. And this ball is crushed deep down the right field line. And that's going to wind up hooking just a bit foul. So a missed opportunity there. This is on the ground over to first. And he'll step on the bag himself. And the inning is over. The Red Sox leave one. They're down four. It's seven to three. Ryan Weber hits the call from the pen to take over on the mound and start the home seventh. Ryan Weber. Last half of the seventh here, and up next will be Willie Adamas. Here it comes. And he pours this one in at the letters, 0-1. And, and now Boston's bullpen springs into action. A left-hander and a right-hander begin to throw. And I'm not sure, but it looks like he may have been blindfolded for that swing. It's 0-2 now. And a slider's in the dirt as he lays off it for a ball. Good pitch right there with the bases empty. Why not take a shot? Throw that breaking ball in the dirt and see if he'll chase after it. Just off the outside that time, laid off for a ball. And that's ball three now as it just misses below the zone. From 0-2 to 3-2, what a great at-bat to start this inning off. Hey, this could be a productive inning. Oh, and it's not often you see a guy like that flail so badly up there, but that was a great pitch for out number one. Third baseman number two. Digging in, Yandy Diaz. It was a flyout for him in his last trip. High in the air out towards shallow right. Right fielder coming on. He gets there, and that's the second out. Now batting. The catcher. Mike. He Digging in. Mike Zanino. 0 for 2 from him so far in this one. He's ready. Here's the first offering. And a change up here, but that's taken low in the dirt for a ball. Two out, nobody on. Oh, and he took a big swing at that one as this is driven out to deep left center field. Gone! It's a solo homer here for Mike Zanino. 24 home runs for him on the season as they open it up to 8-3. to three. He's one of the best home run hitters in the league, and rightfully so. You're not going to get cookies thrown at you every at-bat. 
Most guys can handle a fastball, but he waited back on that off-speed pitch and drove it right out of the yard. Standing in, Kevin Kiermeyer, And on the first pitch, he grounds foul. He's had a great game so far, and a triple would complete the cycle. There's a fastball pretty close that time, but ruled a ball one and one. Way outside, nearly to the backstop, two and one. Looks like he's pitching pretty cautiously right here, but that happens when a guy's three for three on a day. Usually he's a guy you challenge a little bit more, but I guess he's earned some respect in this one. Full count to the Rays center fielder. When a pitch is close to working through a quick inning, that's when you really need to grind out some at-bats. He's done a good job of that, and that's really big when you're hitting towards the bottom of the order. That gets through for a base hit. How about the game he's having? Now four for four. Now back. Boy, talk about having a day, Debo. He gets his fourth knock of the game, but mixed in with one of those four was a round tripper. Not a bad day. Yeah, you have five, maybe a handful of games that you can throw out four knocks throughout the course of the year. Add in a tater to go with it. He's smiling. His food's going to taste better tonight. He's hitless in three at-bats to this point. And a strike to even the count. One and one. Now a swing and a miss at a slider for a strike. The one two. Two ball. You know he's probably cheating on that inside pitch after he got jammed earlier. If you're on the mound right now, you want to try to hit that outside corner, and there's a pretty good chance you'll get him to roll over something. And he fouls this one off. Two out with the man at first. Swing and a little blooper to center. Pilar moving in, but he can't make the play as it finds the outfield grass. Up next for Tampa Bay, the right fielder, Kyle Tucker. At the plate now, Kyle Tucker, as the first pitch to him is in there for a called strike one. He could really use a knock here 0 for 3 in the game so far. Swing and a miss and he's in control 0 and 2. Hey hats off to the pitching staff right here. They've been able to hold a hot hitter in check in game four this series. And here's a fastball on 0 2 but it misses 1 and 2 now. Stone cold take right there that fastball very well could have sent him packing back to the bench. Fouled straight back, and that got up here to the press box. Two down, runners at first and second. And that one misses badly. It's ball two. Swing and a miss for strike three. Pulled the string on him that time, and the inning is over. Rays tack on one more thanks to the solo home run. We're through seven this afternoon. It's the Rays eight and the Red Sox three. All set for the start of the inning, and that brings up the outfielder, Alex Verdugo. First delivery to him on the way. The one one on the ground to third scooped up throw not in time and he's in there with his third hit of the afternoon. 
Now Boy, when things are good, things are going really good. How about a swinging bunt infield single right there for his third knock of the game, Dero? Yeah, he has to be feeling frisky right now. He's had two great at-bats, and then this one, he's 100% on fire. Getting an infield single for his third knock of the game, that's awesome. One ball, no strikes to count. The 1-0 and oh delivery. Swung on and missed, 1-1. One and one. Here's a pop-up now. Choi waits on it. Looks it into his glove, and there's one gone. The bat, number two. Bigger Bogart. Now at the plate, Xander Bogarts. He lined out in his last trip, so looking for better fortunes here. Upper part of the zone there, but taken for a strike. That's over, but low, it's a ball and a strike. Not a surprise to see that low splitter there. Anything with downward movement like that is going to be at the top of the list in a double play situation. Here's a pop-up now. Adamas has a play. Two down. Now batter. Third baseman. Rafael. Standing in, Rafael Devers. First pitch of the at bat on its way. Fouled away. Awfully close with the slider there, but it's one and one. Man, that's one of those. How could you not swing at that one? A good take there on that pitch. Chop toward the second baseman. Throw to first in plenty of time, and the side is retired. One hit, one left. Home half of the eighth straight ahead. It's the Rays' eight. Darwin's and Hernandez. It's on to pitch out of the bullpen in the bottom half of the eighth. Number 63, Darwin Zimmer, Hernandez. Bottom of the inning now, and striding forward the designated hitter, Austin Meadows. The designated hitter, Austin Meadows. Here comes the first pitch. Fastball runs a bit inside here. It's 1-0. Where this one almost in books, the story was clearly the long ball. What are your thoughts on this offense, fellas? Well, Matty V, I don't know what your thoughts are, d -Roll, but boy, when the weather starts to warm up and the ball starts jumping out like this, it's clear that the pitchers need to start making better pitches. Yeah, just great approach. No one really chased today. Really stayed staunch on, uh, on their ability to get that pitcher to come into the heart of the plate, and they did damage with it. And it's fouled away. Good patience to hold back on the curveball in the dirt. It's full now. Three and two. Brandon Lau will be next. Ready with the payoff pitch. Seared down the first baseline. But this will get foul, so they'll do it again. Three and two. Another full count pitch home. And this is taken here for ball four. So the leadoff man's on base to kick off the home eighth. The bat, number eight. So here's the cleanup hitter, Brandon Lau. 0 for 2 on his line thus far. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. A ball of no strikes. And when you're already down five, the last thing you want to do is fall behind in the count when you're on the mound. That's not going to do anything to help you get back into this thing. Fouled off. You're lucky if you get one pitch a night right down the middle. Cannot be late on that fastball. The 1-1 home. Popped him up. Devers in foul ground. Makes the play one away. 
That's exactly what they wanted out of that pitch up of the zone. They took him up the ladder, and he couldn't get up to it. So that was an easy pop-out. Well-executed pitch there. Digging in to try it again, G-Man Choi. He went deep earlier, and he's 2 for 4 to this point. Tried to check it, and it's 0-1. Both teams with an even 10 hits in the ballgame. Ball. Now a fastball off the plate away. A ball and a strike. Ah, and that fastball is too much for him there. One and two. I'm interested to watch this next pitch right here. He got a swing on a high fastball. I wonder if he's going to pull the old police act and climb the ladder. Count even at two and two. From the stretch. Breaking ball. Called third strike as that catches the zone for route number two. Runner on first in a double play situation. So you expect to see a lot of pitches down in the zone. So I think that pitch up right there was a good one. Obviously, the double play is more efficient, but you're always going to take a K when you're on the mound. Look at the pitch too low. It's ball one. He was sat down on strikes in his last at bat. Now the 1 0. Takes this the other way to right. Verdugo's got it, and with it, the inning is over. Ray's strand just the one, but they lead it by a count of eight to three. Next up for the Red Sox, Jesus Aguilar. And to start out the inning, it looks like they've decided to stick with the same reliever out there, Dan. They have, Matt. I think the way he pitched the last inning kind of inspired that. But it's not uncommon for relief pitchers to have troubles after they sit and watch their guys swing the bat a bit. We'll see if he stays as sharp as he was before. Into the corner and slicing foul. Swing and a miss. Good pitch there for the first out here in the ninth. Check for the red side. Detective Christian Vasquez. Ready now, Christian Vasquez. He's hitless in three at bats to this point. Here's the first pitch to him. Hey. Wind up and the 0 1. There's a swing and a high drive into left center field. That goes Kiermeyer, and this one will bounce into the wall. Everyone knows that this guy's numbers are not where he wants them to be so far this year, but you never know by that swing. He looked fluid and confident driving that pitch for a double. We'll see if that gets him going a bit. To the plate now, Isan Diaz. As the first pitch misses to him, it's ball one. Trying to keep it going. A perfect three for three thus far. A ball and a strike. One ball, one strike. Runner at second here with one man out. Lifted down the line and left. And this will wind up a foul ball. And a splitter swung on and missed that time, and that'll be out number two. The center field number five. Striding in for Boston, Kevin, Kevin Pillar. Pillar. And he needs to make something happen. They're down to their final out here in the ninth. Hard on the ground towards short. And that's through. A base hit. And they're going to hold that runner at third base. As even with two away, they didn't like their chances there. Now back. Hey guys, I understand that right there. The third base coach has got to hold them up. They're down by a lot of runs right now. No reason to risk getting a guy thrown out at home in this situation. And that'll bring up the left-handed hitting Andrew Benintendi. And these guys are making a little push here. You have to like the effort despite the odds. 
Yeah, you really do, Matt. Look, they still have a significant hill to climb, but hey, they string a couple of hits together here, and all of a sudden, this thing feels doable. Ready with the 0-1. And he'll try to hold back the swing, but he'll do so unsuccessfully as that's ruled a strike. And now a crowd run right around 25,000 strong comes to their feet. Hit out towards second. Throw on the first will be in time, and the Rain have taken the finale here. They win the series three games to one as the ball game is over. Wow, a nine out save. That's three full innings. You don't see that very often these days. It's awfully nice to have a guy in the back end of your bullpen that can pitch that kind of work. 8-3 to three is today's final. Tampa Bay jumped out to an early lead in the first and never looked bad. Brendan McKay hangs win number 11 on his line. Marcus Walden permitted six earned runs to come across in the losing effort. Jake Faria takes the rare three-inning save his second. So that just about does it for Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, Heidi Watney, and our entire crew. I'm Matt Vaskers, and you've been watching MLB The Show. For more, make your way over to theshownation.com. The final line score for this afternoon's ballgame for the victorious Rays. Eight runs, ten hits, no errors.